Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Planet X News. It is October 15th, 2017. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the other day I showed you a video and uh, it was a strange anomaly that we were seeing on the sun. I took the video footage from the Solar Dynamics Observatory and you see me use that quite a lot in my videos. We were able to capture what seems to be um, a very large, possibly plasma bubble of some kind, and it releases from the sun. Now, over the course of the last couple of years, we've seen this anomaly several times before on the lower part of the sun, in the lower left, in the lower right. We've seen it in the upper left. And once again, we see this, this very strange release. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, the, 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 the imaging is kind of unclear. Um, to me, it, it is kind of unclear. So we really don't know exactly what it is or what it may be. But while I was waiting for SDO to catch up to itself and give me a little bit more of the footage, it finally came today. And again, things just aren't that clear. But while I was looking at that, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed something that looked rather strange. So I just completely forgot about the large plasma fixture coming off of the sun. And I started to tune in on this other object, which is, I'm going to show you, uh, just about in the 11 o'clock position near the top of the sun. What caught my eye is the fact that in the recent past, I have captured a very, very large spherical object up there in the 10 to 11 o'clock position on the left side of the sun. Now, I've captured this object several times, and we've gotten some really, really good shots. A month ago, I caught the same object almost in the same position. If all of you have been watching my videos and following it, you would have seen it. So anyways, I have this, all of this footage set up in my video maker, and it would be easier for me to show you and explain it all to you right here. So just bear with me. Now I slowed this down and I, I believe this is going to be the video footage of this large plasma loop. So I slowed it down a little bit so we can see it again. The, the imaging, it, it's not that crystal clear, but let's just take a look at it. You'll see about right here. You'll see the plasma connection. Then watch up here. Now I slowed this down. Now, a lot of you have already seen that short video that I did yesterday pertaining to this, but the video cut off as far as the footage goes, and we didn't really get to see that big plasma burst at the end. And because the object goes off into uh, dark space, well, we don't see it. Uh, we don't see what happens at that point. But I saw an object and I saw something forming at the 10 o'clock position. And you're looking at what I captured. And it looked kind of odd. So I began to dig a little further and took some screenshots. And I didn't really have to change contrast or anything of that nature to see what was, what was really there, what was coming up. Now, this is the 10 to 11 o'clock position that I was referring to just a few seconds ago. And if you watched our live stream from the other day, I was showing you on a drawing that I made that the possibilities of this orbit of this object. And it's actually going against the Earth's rotation around the sun. So this is what I started to see. And ladies and gentlemen, let's be, you know, let's be honest here. I mean, you're going to see the video of this and you're going to see it appear. 
You're going to see it come up and out of the corona of the sun. You're going to see a lot of activity on the sun. And, you know, I tried to slow it down enough. I tried to zoom in enough without it pixelizing. Now, I tried to give it just a little bit more of a higher definition so we can see what is actually there. And the, the little bit of video footage that I recorded for this, I mean, it's, it's, it's very, very suspect. Now, I can't say for 100% sure that's a solid object, but things just, they looked out of place. And again, if I had not captured an object in this corner of the sun, in this position, at this 10 to 11 o'clock position before, I really wouldn't think anything of it. But it's probably been four, five, maybe six times that I've captured an object right here, right in this position. And someone asked the other day, well, why are you capturing it in the same position? Well, the SDO 48 hour loop, you know, they give us a, a, a picture every uh, eight, 12 minutes, 16, sometimes they skip hours and, you know, we get kind of a jittery look to the sun as it's rotating. So I really can't answer that question, but that's where I'm finding it. That's where I'm seeing it. So as we look at this object, it looks pretty, pretty circular. I mean, you can't get any more circular than that. It looks like a disc, uh, a perfect sphere. You can see it right there. And it is very, very close to the sun, very close. How big it is, well, that's very hard to judge. It can actually be a little bit of a distance behind the sun and still be enveloped in the corona of the sun. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let this play on and we're gonna get to the rest of this video footage. I just thought that was very odd. Now, this was another photograph uh, in a different frame. And this was a few frames that were advanced forward. And I just took a quick screenshot of this. And once again, it's unclear. It's unclear here what it is, but you can see the very, very well-defined round shape, even a little bit of surface uh, on this object right here. I do not think that it is part of a coronal prominence because it's just too entirely spherical for it to be one of these coronal prominences or an arching uh, arching plasma or anything of that nature. Now, when we get into the actual video footage of it, it kind of gets a little more unclear, but I've included it in here anyway so we can take a look at it. So this was just another one of the still shots captured. So we'll let this go ahead and play through. And I'll just go ahead and zip by here. Now, this was another still image that I took. Usually when you see these coronal prominences, you'll see a big teardrop shaped bubble right there. And sometimes they're a little more prominent shaped like a leaf. Sometimes they're very, very oval, but never are they perfectly spherical. And I've, I've seen many, many photographs and many, many videos of coronal prominences. And, you know, you get them right by, uh, right from NASA. But I've never seen them so spherical that, you know, it makes you wonder. These are making me wonder because this is perfectly spherical. perfectly spherical. If any of you aren't sure about what I'm showing you, just Google coronal prominence and click on images and just take a look at some of the coronal prominences and, you know, you can compare and get that vision in your mind. So when I mention these coronal prominences, you have something to go by as far as a visual. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward in this and I do believe this is the point where we're going to get into the part of the video. So I'll let this go ahead and play and you can watch it for yourself. And I put this in slow motion Now you could see it starting to form or come up.
Now there's a lot of action going on here on the sun. Now let me just stop this for one second. You're seeing a lot of activity right here on the sun. So whatever is coming up around here, and I could see a little bit of this object here as it's getting bigger, but whatever is coming up is, is actually causing more of a disturbance on the sun. So let's just go back. I'll just go back real slow. And you can see it right there. You could see it's, it's, it's starting to show itself. And then it just seems to be so enveloped in the corona of the sun that it kind of gets disguised. And, and, and by all means, it should be. It's, it's very, very close. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep advancing this. And then we move into another piece of video. Now, this is the same portion of video. Uh, this part, I just applied a little bit of a darker filter so we can maybe see a little more definition. Now, I took a screenshot of this to see what I can find and as you can see, once again, you know, it, it's completely spherical. It seems to have some type of surface on it. And that's what really draws me to the image. I can't see through it, so I'm not going to label it a coronal prominence. Because a lot of these coronal prominences, uh, if you take a look at some of them, you know, they're, they're almost... Um, uh, its opacity is, you, you know, you can see through it somewhat. And this seems to be completely solid. So that makes me wonder what exactly is this? Now, this is just another screenshot. And again, this is about one frame more. You can see it's perfectly circular and it's solid. This other coloring you see here all along the bottom. This is the corona of the sun. And, you know, when I looked at this photograph right here, this almost reminded me of what I caught back in February, March, April, May, June, July, August, and September. So, over the course of over a half of a year, I've been catching the same object, almost in the same position. So once again, that leads me to believe that these objects are definitely in a set orbit around the sun. To me, there's no doubt about it. I'm not, I'm not going to change my theory or my thoughts because too much of the evidence is adding up to support my theory. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with it. And I think that's what has happened. As I've mentioned before, and in our live stream the other day, I definitely feel beyond a shadow of a doubt that the sun has captured these objects. I don't really know how many of them there are. I don't know their actual sizes. But folks, they have to be pretty big. I mean, they really have to be of a very large size. I would have to say probably bigger than Jupiter. So that's a pretty large body. So this is what we were looking at here. Again, this is all the same footage uh, from the SDO today. And you guys can probably go there and, and, catch, and catch it yourself. Now, here is pieces of the video. And again, I slowed this down. And you're going to see this object right there. You're going to see it start to develop. And this is what caught my eye once again. So let's just go slow and you'll see it starts to come up. And then it starts to get enveloped in the corona of the sun. And I'll go backwards here. I'll go forwards. You know, and I have to say, folks, you know, to me, 
it's it's very very suspect very suspect because I can't really get that much of a clear view on it uh, without it being in the corona of the sun. I'm going to go ahead and advance. Now, see here, I was trying to get, uh, I was trying to get a better view of it as it was lifting a little further away from the sun. But again, because of the intensity of the corona, and you know, just the resolution, that's about the the best that I can get it right there. But let's take a look at some more here. Now, this was, I really blew this up and I kind of distorted it a little bit, but I'll show you the original. Uh, this was inverted. And you can see this object really came out in the inversion, changing it almost to a negative. You can see it here right here and this i just i just blew it up a little bit too much but we can take care of that we can knock it down a little bit matter of fact let's do that right now we'll just open it up a little bit Now you just got to center your eyes on it for a second and just take a look back here. So now when it's inverted, you can actually see it right there. Because now the separation of color, the, the corona of the sun is now a blackish color, real, real dark navy blue. You can see the corona here, the outer corona up in here and then if you look closely it's slightly behind the sun and there she be we'll just take a look at the next picture now this is the one that I, I said I blew up too too much I blew this one up way too much now this is the video and I just converted it into black and white to see if I can catch a little more definition. So I'll go ahead and let it play for a second so you can see it in its normal motion. And you can see as it, it, it starts to form or it starts to, it starts to become more visible, but it just becomes very, very suspect. And what I mean by suspect is, is that complete spherical shape is what really gets me so i'm going to go ahead and stop this and we're going to drag it back just a little bit and you can see it's definitely you know even when you stop it you just stop it right at certain points and you try to get a better look at it I thought the black and white would do it some justice, but you know, there's so much of the, uh, the Corona it's enveloped so much in the Corona that it is really, really hard to get a good look at it. But in some of the other still photographs, uh, it definitely looks like a spherical object. Look at the way that it seems to just come through the Corona. Very, very suspect. Now, this is the composite image of the sun. This is a couple of different angstroms of light filtered together. And once again, I'll just let this go slow. And we can see it right here. And you notice, ladies and gentlemen, you know, there's nothing else like this on the sun. You know, there, it would be a different story if there were a couple of these here and a couple of them there. And, you know, we saw them constantly, but it's not. And, and, and it, again, it has me 
believing that this object was there. It was right there. And if it wasn't for the corona of the sun, we would probably have a really, really good look at it. And again, I'm going to go ahead back here and I'll let this play out for you so you can see it. You can see it for yourself in its regular motion. And here we go. So you got to watch very carefully. And then it seems to get enveloped in the sun, enveloped in the corona. But it just looks very, very similar to a sphere, a solid mass. And again, if I would not have found this object in this position so many times, I really wouldn't even think twice about it. I wouldn't even probably pay attention to it. So I'm gonna stop this here and we're gonna advance. Now, this is the same 48 hour loop from the SDO. Uh, this is just in the 304 angstrom view. The reason why I'm showing you this is because I was wanting to see if in fact there was a huge plasma loop that maybe was here and I was just looking at the different angstroms of light on the SDO the different colors and they're they're catch they're catching different layers of the Sun basically and this is getting really close down to the surface so as I was looking at this and I was playing it I was wanting to see a really big plasma loop here you know just let's say the flames shooting out and connecting but let's just take a look at it and again this is all the same date and time and that's it so I'm not seeing any type of plasma ejection I'm not seeing any type of uh, coronal prominence. I'm not seeing anything back here but black space. The reason being is this 304 angstrom view of the sun, well, you're never going to see anything back here. The only thing that you are going to see is the surface of the sun and any type of plasma ejections as you see right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take this back just a little bit and I'll let it play for you so you can just see it for yourself. And then it will kick right into the red part of the video. So it's definitely, to me, it's definitely suspect. So here we go. So what I'm trying to show you here, folks, is even if the object is here, you're not going to see it. You are not going to see it because number one, the, the video cameras on the SDO, uh, the 304 angstrom of ultraviolet light, you're not going to see anything back here. That's why you never see any other planets passing by. That's why you never see stars or anything like that because the only thing that it's recording is the 304 angstroms of light, and which is very, very close to the surface of the sun. So we're not going to see this object on this red view on the SDO. What I was looking for was something like this, a large plasma loop right here. And then maybe I would have thought a second time about what I was seeing but there's no plasma loop here there's no coronal prominence there's no plasma ejection there is nothing nothing but the surface of the Sun right here bubbling and here we'll just take a look I'll, I'll move it forward And 
that's it. I'm just going to zing back all the way to the beginning. You know, folks, this photograph here really gets me. You know, this one here really looks like a solid object. No doubt about it. I mean, you can see that it is so close in this view that it has separated the corona. You see how it just sits down in there. So it has to be a solid object for it to disrupt the corona and just sit in there like a little pocket. But in actuality, it's a, it's a little bit of a distance away from the sun, but it is still enveloped in the corona of the sun. Once again, pretty, pretty big discovery here. You know, this does prove to myself, at least, my theory is right, that this object or these objects are in a very tight orbit around the sun. And it's probably between the 24 and 25 day cycle and a 27 day rotation of the sun. So give or take a few days, I don't know for sure, but all I know is what I'm looking at right here looks like a solid object. And I don't know much, uh, I don't know how much more evidence that we can get, but once again, like I've said before, each and every day, we must continue because maybe that day is going to come where maybe NASA slips up some more and we get a crystal clear picture of at least one of these objects. So this is what I have for you today, folks. This was all captured today on the SDO Solar Dynamics Observatory on the 48-hour loop. So if you guys want to go over there and check it out, Maybe take some still shots for yourself, download the video, work with it, see what you come up with. But this is what I saw today, October 15th, 2017. This is Scott from Planet X News. Thank you very much for watching.